Hi, I'm Joshua Curving, and welcome to another Death Battle prediction video. But first, Mario vs. Sonic. Uh, yeah, that was a very, very good episode. Um, it definitely lowballed the two characters pretty far, but one thing that I actually noticed that I really, really liked that they did um, was they actually had both of the characters uh, in the like top right corners where they have like extra little blurbs of information. They actually did list some of the like higher end feats for the characters. Um, which I actually kind of like the idea of. Um, because the main thing with that is that that means that they're going with a more casual versus uh, discussion on the actual main video. But then with those blurbs in the top right corner, they actually do address some of the more high-end um, arguments that are actually more in-depth for the versus community. Um, it's a pretty good uh, twist on things. And ultimately, they did come to the right decision, um, with Mario being way better and stronger. Um, I'm sad that they said that Sonic is faster. I'm quite sad about that, because M Mario realistically is the faster one of the two. Um, and other than that, the animation was pretty fantastic. Uh, there were a couple moments that I was kind of eh on. Um, main one is when uh, they're like rising up towards space um, it's like the it's a cycle of like the same like three hits from each of them um, it just kind of felt a bit weird but other than that it was a very good fight um, probably my favorite my two favorite moments in the episode are when all the cats are coming in um, or just that so long gay hedgehog um, just very classic. Uh, I, I'm pretty happy with that one and how it turned out. Um, other than that, I don't think there's really too much to say about this one, other than some of the things that they've addressed in the Death Battle cast. One, ugh, there was some severe wank of uh, Archie uh, Sonic going on there. When one of their own researchers has made a full blog of just why Archie Sonic is not actually as broken as uh, people believe it to be, um, it's just kind of saddening to see them go about, oh, like, I'm sure he could compare to, they actually had a community death battle of Archie Sonic versus The Flash. And the Flash shit stomps so hard. Um, but basically the main thing that I noticed was that they said that uh, Cappy wasn't really used because it wouldn't work, which is actually kind of wrong. Um, the main thing is that Mario has res sorry Sonic has resisted mind control. Um, so that is essentially uh, very different from what Cappy does because Cappy is more a form of possession. Um, it's the difference between mind fuckery and soul fuckery, which are two very different uh, resistances. Um, it's like, for example, uh, if Akuma were to use the uh, uh, Shingoku Satsu on you and destroy your soul, um, how much of a like if you're if you can block like a telepathic attack, that's not going to help you. Meanwhile, if uh, Professor Xavier tries to dig into your head, the fact that your soul is protected isn't going to help you. So it's basically the same thing in this circumstance where. Um, you being able to resist mind control is not going to allow you to resist possession because they're just two very different forms of control. It would be the same as saying that because someone resisted a telepathic, uh, like a mind control feat, that someone wouldn't be able to just use telekinesis to just control the person. Uh, there's just so many different ways of controlling people or doing different things that just going for the for, for one of them and saying that that kind of thing can't be done is is just kind of wrong. So that's one thing that I was kind of nitpicking at, but I do agree that it's a nitpick. Uh, it was overall a very, very good episode. Uh, and now we come to this one, Ultron versus Sigma. Uh, and I think it's one of like three or four matches that we've had where the two characters have like actually crossed over in various, uh, in I think only in the one game really, uh, Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. But we have this fight. Um, now, the one thing that I'm going to go into a little bit is that uh, Sigma himself is far more powerful than a lot of people would give him credit for. Um, there are numerous feats throughout the games where uh, 
He's become like the size of a planet. Uh, he has like massively faster than light reactions, um, and overall, he is a lot more powerful than you would think. However, that is going to do fuck and all against Ultron. Um, I think the highest feats for Ultron come out to being like about star level, and I'm not entirely sure of the exact amount of FTL but certainly less than Ultron. Because that's the thing, is Ultron is one of those characters who's been showing up for quite a while in the comics. Um, and one of the major things about him is he's one of, like... He's like the raid boss of the Avengers. There's some where it's just like, oh, we only need Thor to deal with this one, or we only need the Hulk. Ultron is one of those ones that brings everybody out of the woodworks. You need to bring in everybody or you're going to get your ass kicked. Um, so there is no reason to not scale Ultron to a lot of the Avengers that he has completely pummeled. Um, there's also the question of which bodies they're going with, which I think in the, uh, Death Battle cast they actually did indicate that they were going to, uh, they were going to be doing multiple bodies, in which case you get to the point where Ultron is even more going to win because of just some of the crazier bodies that he's had. Uh, Sigma, for the most part, keeps things fairly standard. Um, again, outside of the one time where he was, like, planet-sized. And I think there was one where he was mostly just digital. Um, but then we also get to the argument where they both have these uh, robot viruses, essentially, that can infect various things. Uh, Sigma used his on an entire planet, and it managed to infect them, make them crazy, uh, and basically be slaves to his will. So could he not do that to Sigma? Sorry, to uh, Ultron. Problem is, uh, the way that Death Battle does things is if two things are essentially equivalent, they're removed. So if one thing is superior than the other one, it's basically as if the other one is completely removed from this. And Ultron himself has far better, like, uh, Ultron virus uh, feats, um, where he basically, like, there was an entire, like, intergalactic empire that he just went, it's all mine now which completely trumps anything Sigma has. Um, so I would actually be intrigued if, uh, for this fight, they actually didn't have Sigma die. They just had Ultron basically be like, yep, that's mine now. Um, that would be very interesting. I would certainly love to see a fight where the other person survives just as a slave to the other's will. It would be a, a bit more of a cruel ending for it. Um... But yeah, in overall, it does not. It's not a particularly close fight. Um, sad to see Sigma go like that, but he's about to get completely killed. Um, I can't really see too many arguments that you could use for Sigma winning, uh, mostly because of the fact that just anything that Sigma has, Ultron has ten times more. Um, so, yeah, um, that's basically what we're going with. We've only got two more episodes after this one, um, the latter of which is the finale. Uh, and they've said that that is the most requested death battle of this year. So in terms of guessing what that's going to be, I would probably say that it's going to be Dark, so Dark Side versus Thanos. Um, it's the, the most requested fight would probably be either that or Galactus versus Unicron. But with Infinity War coming out this year... Thanos. It's a good time to use him. Um, so yeah, that's basically all my thoughts for this one, and I will see you guys uh, after this one when we talk about the next one.